Even in that, what do we say? We find grace. Because what does it say? When we look in the illustration here, it says, Therefore we are buried with Him in the baptism of the death, that like Christ was raised up from the dead to the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. And the implication here is that Paul is dealing with, you know, you think about it as Christians that we should know. There's things that we should just know. And as many of us are baptized into Jesus, the idea here behind the ancient Greek word baptized was to immerse or overwhelm. We should be overwhelmed by the Spirit of God. You know, I've been there. I was talking, me and a person was talking, you know, when I was just up there this weekend, uh, you know, doing the, I keep, man, i got to be careful. I keep saying funeral. It's a, it's a wedding, you know. But something's been like that. <laughs> but I was up there talking with a man, and, and we was talking about how being overwhelmed by the Spirit. You know, letting the, the Spirit of God just coming on you and just moving in you and through you and doing all those things. And we was talking about, you know, it was, you know, and I, you know, I was mentioning that, you know, that the, the many times in the day that we're in, we start to look for the manifestation of the Spirit, but we don't look for the Spirit itself. We look for the benefit of knowing Christ, but yet we don't, you know, we don't look for Christ Himself. And it was going on even in the days that they were in here because why? They was looking for Jesus because He was feeding them. Hey, there by the seaside, He was, you know, He was healing their sicknesses, and and He was He was coming in and He was hey giving life to the dead, and He was you know doing all those things. If we're not careful. We look for the benefit, but we miss Christ, even in the point. We should look for being up to be overwhelmed. The Bible uses the idea of being baptized into something in several different ways. When a person is baptized in the water, they're immersed and they're covered over with the water. When they're baptized in the Holy Spirit in Matthew 3 and verse 11 and Acts 1 and 5, they're immersed or covered with the Holy Spirit. And it says that when they are baptized with the suffering in Mark chapter 10, they are immersed or covered with suffering. Think about that. Man, how, how many of you ever felt like that? You know, I can prove this point. Because sometimes, in the midst of it, Satan will have us, I'm going to tell you, even so bad up. You ever, man, felt like you was, you know, underwater, and you're just trying, Tracy said she had a dream like that. She said she'd been in such a deep sleep before she was telling me about that, that she's, you ever had one of them dreams, she said, where it feels like you're in such a deep sleep that when you're coming out of it, you're, it's like you're swimming toward the top, you know. And you, yeah. <laughs> Kathy, you see that dream. <laughs> see, that, 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 there's others. It, it must be a woman. No, I'm just kidding. No. Oh, when? It was in deep. Oh, okay. Is that a deep of sleep? Don't you straighten my brows man. But when you're looking at that, talk about it, you know, even, you know, sometimes we feel so grounded out. You know, what I was going back to say is, sometimes, you know, we're so much in our situation that, hey, it seems like the more we struggle, Doug, the more we go under sometimes. And it's only, if you think about this, you don't believe it? Here's an example of it. Peter, hey, when he said, Lord, if you bid me come, he said, call and I'll come. And Peter stepped out on the water. Hey, not one of us had ever took a single step except for Peter. Hey, it was him that was out on the water, right? And it said when he looked about, he saw the waves were boisterous and he saw all the things that was around him. What did it say? That he began to sink. And then what happened? Then Jesus, what did he do? He stepped out into the river. He reached down and he lifted Peter up out of that water. We've all been in that same place. And it's only through, you know, only only Christ that can rescue us from those things. The believers, water baptism or being baptized into Christ is a demonstration or the acting out of the believer's immersion and the identification with Christ. We are buried with Him. As Christ also raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in that newness of life. And Paul also builds on the idea of going under the water in a picture of being buried and coming up from the water and then rising from the dead. When you look at it here, if you look at verse, chapter, verse 5 of this chapter, it says, For we have been planted. Now notice what it says here. We have been planted together in the likeness of death. And we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, 
and that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth it says we should not serve sin. It says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. It says, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with him, knowing that Christ, the beginning raised from the dead, died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died to sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And that word is planted together, united together. It expresses a close union that we should not only have with Christ, but look around you tonight. You're supposed to have it with each other. I ask you, you know, if there's been this change, Paul here expressed a similar idea when his own life because in Philippians chapter 3 and verses 10 and 11 he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed unto his death if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Paul said he will not hate. He wanted to know Christ not only in, listen to this, not only in the things that build us up, but he wanted to know Christ in the things sometimes that will get broke down. He's talking about living life. Man in the mire and the clay. Down in the mud. You ever tried to walk in the mud sometimes? You ever tried to walk down there? Hey, you know, you step, you, you know, you put your foot down in there, Doug, and hey, I bet you, you know it all too well, being in the military. Man, I bet you, Johnny knows it. I know he does it. Hey, Michael back there, I'm sure he knows it. Hey, in, in the, even in that boot camp, you think about it, probably to the point I know that I heard how Christians would say one time he put his foot down in the mud in there in Nam when he was there. He said, and, and it was so deep, he said it would just try to pull his boots off, literally off of his feet. You'd lift your foot and your boot would just still be there. Sometimes that's where we have to walk. Don't like it. It hurts. You know, admit it. You know, we all, going back to that example, we want to be on the mountaintop. Because it's hard to climb from the valley to the mountaintop, right? And we all want to be up there, but hey, we, and, and sometimes, you know, the fact is that it's Jesus, he, he supernaturally picks us up and just sets us up there sometimes because even, and I think this is a good example, I wish Eric was here tonight, but he made the statement that he can remember that in the beginning how that God just totally delivered him from all those things, you know, that he was beset with. You know, hey, sometimes it's, you know, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, God brings us to that place in our life where he takes, you know, those things away. But then can I tell you, a lot of times, he'll put those things back and let you make the decision on what you're going to do with them. Why? Because through the power of the Spirit, sitting right here in here, he wants to give us just a taste of what the other side is going to be like. And then he wants you to keep in your mind how good it was when you were standing there, Randy, on the mountaintop. You know, think of, I'll even ask the young ones, go to the... Man, go to the you know one of the biggest maybe crowning moments of your life. Maybe it was a football game. Maybe it was baseball. Maybe it was you know maybe it was a time that you had with your family. Maybe it was something that you could just you know take back in your life and you can remember. Hey, then when I finally achieved what you know I wanted to achieve, and think of how good that that felt. But it always can't. You can't stay there. Even at that moment when you could, I can remember the first time I was at, I was at Farmington. I remember that first trophy I won. I was, man, Johnny, you couldn't have got me down. I was up on a high, you know, I can remember what I outrun. It was another Chevrolet, by the way. I wish Ted was here. But uh, <laughs> I outrun a 55 Chevrolet. I was in my 64, I was in a uh, 64 Chevelle. And I, we was, we'd been running down there. I was running in the street class. And I remember, uh, you know, I looked at my brother. And I said, well, here we are. I said, I finally to the place. We're in that last round. I said, I, you know, I, you know, I'm going to do. I said, I'm just going to tell you how it is. I know how fast he is. I know I can't outrun him. So I'm just going to hit it. I said, I'm going to leave just as soon as I can. If I red light, I red light. But if I don't, he's going to be in trouble. That's what I said. And, uh, man, I want to tell you, the lights came down. They were blinking down. And, man, I hit that thing, and it uh, almost perfect. I think I cut an 030 light or something like that. And I was gone. And my brother said that he could see, because I got the head start because he was faster than me. He could see just how well I just left. And he, he got all excited. He jumped the gun. And my brother said he hit it too hard out of line. He lost traction, you know. And he finally got it back in under control, you know. And he said, by then, it was too late. I was gone. And, man, 
before I even got over back to the staging lane, you know, you're supposed to pull your car back in the staging lane and pick up your trophy, man. I didn't even get to do that. My brother was standing on the side over there with my trophy. <laughs> up the man, right there, right? And man, that was a good feeling. But Doug, you know what? Let me tell you what happened. Man, that was that week. From after that point, once I had been up there, you know, and I had the trophy and everything in my hand, I, I wanted another one. And then I started getting let down, right? Because, man, I'd set a mark in my life that that's where it was at. If, if, if I was there to win those things, right? And, man, once I'd won it, man, I was ruined. A lot of times in our life, we think that we, when I go back to it, we think we ought to be up there on the mountaintop. We can't live there forever, you know. You know, even in that, it'll even cost you some things. I looked at it after that point, it cost me a lot. Because I kept on, what? Because I was, in, I was wanting to win those things after that, I started, hey, putting more money into it, more money into it, more time into it, more time. Hey, I take away time from my family, I took away money out of our pockets, and I've done all these things, and what? What did it come? I got two trophies sitting at home. You know, I look at them things now, you know what they mean to me? Almost absolutely nothing. But what is, yeah, they are dusty. <laughs> Tracy knows it. I pull them out, hey, once a year, whether they need it or not, and I'll dust them off just for hay. You know what means more to me than the trophy? It's my grandfather's glasses that hang on the trophy. Because he put so much into my life. You know, I hung them, I hung, I hang them glasses, and that's what holds the trophies there, just to hold them glasses. Because he poured so much into my life, and I think about it. In the end, that'll be your children. You know, that, what's going to matter is what you were poured into their life. You know what I mean? Trophies and all that's just going to pass away. Money, it's the same way. You got it today, man. Poof, it's gone tomorrow. You know. But man, our life in Christ. Think about this. It's never going to pay. Those things are never going to fade. We're going to a place, it says that, man, we're going to live life eternal. Right. We're going to be in a place that's perfect. It's not made. Hey, why? Because, I don't, hey, the only trophies I'm going to receive there, hey, I'm going to get to lay at Jesus' feet. The only crowns that I'm going to receive there, hey, I'm taking them off my head, and, hey, I'm going to lay them down at his feet. And you know what it says I'm going to do, Doug? Hey, some people don't like this. They say, well, that's going to be kind of boring. Just worshiping Jesus forever? Well, maybe you've never been in a good Holy Ghost service because I want to tell you, if you've ever felt that spirit, and can you imagine, hey, that when we're there, hey, I know what it felt like to have the Holy Ghost moving in that service and, man, how good it felt and how God was just blessing me up. And Wilson used to talk about it squeezing me up and doing all those things. Hey, can you imagine when, hey, it's there and we're in that place with Him and we're feeling that continuously? That would be how we live our lives. Like that right, Mike? That's how it's going to be. It's going to be a wonderful thing. This old world, hey, the older I get, the more I realize I'm going to be there. They said, well, Pastor, I don't understand that. I had, you know, George, I remember him. He said, Pastor, you know, y'all always talk about being in heaven and doing all those things and get, getting to see Jesus. He said, now, I want to do all those things, but he said, I'm not ready tonight. And I don't, he said, I don't see it. He said, I don't understand because there's some things I still want to do. And I said, well, George, you've been called into the ministry, right? He shook his head, yes. And I said, you go and do exactly what God tells you to do. And come see me in about three years and let's see how you feel. <laughs> He'll want to see Jesus too, trust me, if he's doing what God had me do. Because we have a lot to bear down here. Our children, they have a lot to bear. Sierra's shaking her head. They have a lot to bear. There's a lot that they put up with. There's a lot that they have on them that we don't even think about. It takes Jesus. You won't be able to live, I'm going to tell you. You won't make it. You won't make it through this life. You won't experience the, 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 all the blessings inside of God's grace and His mercy unless you know Him. Paul said it there, and I'm going to read it again in Philippians uh, 10 and 11, 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, that you may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. We're in that fellowship. Being conformed to His death, by any means you, that you may obtain the resurrection of the dead, some are often ready to be united together in glory in the resurrection, but they're unwilling to be united together in His death. And I'm talking about where we live, right here. That's where I'm going to stop. If you don't know 
I want to tell you, if you never experienced it, that relationship that you can have with Christ, that if you never experienced that mercy and grace that God has offered, you know, as you bow your head, if you close your eyes tonight, I just want to take just a few minutes, you know, and, and, and give you an invitation to, hey, to, to come and to receive Christ and have that fellowship that I've been talking about tonight. You know, it's a close new union there. There's, you know, you know, between the death of Christ and between His resurrection, you think about it, there's that close union. God, you know, you, you know, God has showed us through His death we have life, and through His resurrection we had the promise that we're going to live on. Tonight, I don't know where you stand. But I'm going to ask you tonight, with every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around, I'm going to ask you tonight, if you close your eyes and dead, nobody's looking around, nobody sees you, but honest before God, if you close your eyes and dead, do you know that you know that you know that heaven would be your home? Are you saved tonight? Do you know Jesus? If you know that tonight, can you just slip your hand up as a testimony tonight? Amen. Hands all over the building. Amen. You can put them down. Maybe you couldn't answer that question tonight. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know the answer. Maybe you're confused about the answer. Maybe you, there's never been a time in your life when you have accepted him. Whatever that reason is tonight. Would you let me pray for you? You say, Brother Scott, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't have that without a doubt salvation that you're talking about tonight. I'm not sure that if I if I close my eyes, that I'm not sure that heaven would be my home. But I just want you to pray for me. Would there be one here that's like that? Just lift your hand up and let me pray for you. Do it, do it quickly. I see that hand. Would there be another? I see that hand. You can put them down. Would there be another? Two have already raised their hand and been honest. I'm asking the Christians to pray at this point. How many would say, how about you tonight? Do you know? You say, Brother Scott, just pray for me tonight. Would there be another? Would there be another? Let's go to the Lord. Father, Lord, as we come to you tonight, Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, not for anything, Lord, that I've done. Lord, but all about, I thank you tonight for what you've done here in this service. Through your word, Lord. And Father, Lord, tonight, Lord, you saw the hands, but Lord, more importantly, you know the hearts tonight. And Jesus, I know that it's only going to be through you, Lord, that these are able to come and receive, Lord, what you freely give. Lord, the last verse was, for the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Tonight, Lord, I pray, Lord, as we open up this invitation time, Lord, that, you'll, that they will come and they'll receive that gift, Lord, that you've given. Father, Lord, I mean, tonight, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord, will just come down into this invitation time. And Jesus, Lord, that you'll have your will and your way. Lord, I thank you for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for your grace. And Father, I know tonight, Lord, let make it real in the hearts of those that have raised their hand tonight. Lord, it says in Scripture that the Spirit of God won't always strive with man. Father, Lord, you only had to deal once with that heart. Father, we have a responsibility there. Lord, you've given us a choice to accept it or to reject it. Father, Lord, I pray that you'll help these, Lord. Lord, help them to get where they need to be. Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Lord, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you keep your head bowed, eyes closed. Keep playing. Let's all stand together. If you have a need tonight, hey, Michael's here, Sandy's here, she'll pray with you. Johnny's here, Keith. He'll stop playing. I'm sure Randy will pray with you. He'll get out of the back and come pray with you. If you have a need tonight, let's keep our head bowed, eyes closed tonight. If you have a need, you raise your hand that you were lost. Why not? Hey, why not get that thing right? Hey, grab somebody there nearby. If you don't feel you want to come on your own or by yourself tonight, 
Maybe you could do it right there in your seat. Grab that person there by you and get them to show you how to be saved. Come up. I'm going to tell you. You'll never regret it. I'm going to tell you, hey, the devil told me all men are lies. I sit back there. He said, they won't pay. He said, they'll call you a liar. They'll, they'll tell you, you know, they, they'll never accept you. They'll never do it. Hey, man, he lied to me in every way you can lie. Don't let Satan lie to you tonight. Jesus died for you. You have a need tonight. Get up out of your seat. Come on. Let me urge you tonight. Come on. You got, you got people here that love you. There's nothing. Hey, what can hold you back? Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about, hey, don't worry about living perfect because, hey, the Bible's already showed us here tonight from His Word. Hey, we're none of us perfect. First John says if we say that we have no sin, we're a liar and the truth's not in us tonight. And I'm talking about a relationship. You know, hey, even in our marriage relationship, sometimes we're not perfect. Even in, hey, in our everyday relationships, we're not perfect. We fall short. But I'm going to tell you tonight, forgiveness feels good. If you don't know it tonight, if you've never experienced that forgiveness, they were. It says, Christ will catch you sins as far as the east is to the west, never more to be remembered. If you've never experienced that, why don't you come? Why don't you come? Don't do it for anybody else. Do it. Hey, it's between you and the Lord. Your salvation is there. It begins with you and Him. Maybe you need tonight to find salvation. If you have a need tonight, you just need to come and pray. Come on. You just need to pray. Come on. know we love you. If you weren't able to get up out of your seat and come forward, know that you can talk to anybody that's in this place. I want to tell you we're open. We'll be here for you if you need if you need to be saved tonight. If somebody can take the word of God, open it up and share that with you. So uh, just know that. The invitation may be in as far as right here on this altar, but the altar is always open. We don't ever close it. And we give that to, we give that to the Lord. But uh, if you have that need tonight, get with somebody before you leave this place and make sure of it. Okay, Mike. I'm going to go one step further. I'm just going to ask you personally. Because I don't know who the rest of hand is. I'm just so giddy as everybody else. But just come find, come find me. Amen. Say I was one of the two. Amen. And I just, I just can't be saved. That's yeah. right. Amen. I'll, I'll make myself available. Amen. Go ahead, Sam. I got something I want to say to say. The Lord's been working on me all afternoon. And um, Michael and I had actually, you know about this, we've been discussing it you know, a couple of weeks ago that we had finally got to the point where we were fed up, we were done, and we were ready to leave. Mm. We were going to go find a new church. Mm. And the guys talked about it, and we both prayed about it. And sitting through the meeting preaching, Scott preached the other night, and he was a couple of weeks ago, he was talking about, he brought up the tax situation again. Mm-hmm. And the thing that the Lord laid on my heart that night was that God's already saved this church once that I know of in mm-hmm. five years that we've been here. You're right. And why did He save the church? He saved this church for His glory. That's right. And we all talk about we want to be a part of His glory when we get to heaven. If we all put our roots down right here, that's right. And we dig in and we work, we are a part of His glory right here. Right here. Amen. 
We don't have to do anything anywhere else. If we trudge through the muck and the mire That's right. every day and continue to lift him up and do what he would have us to do, mm -hmm. then we are a part of his glory. Amen. Amen. Even in opposition. Why can't we start now? That's right. We get to him. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's start glorifying him. Right. And with everything this church is going through, we've got to be destined for something great. That's because right. He's not fighting just the church as a whole. He's fighting each individual family yeah. that's in this church. That's right. He's trying to split us all apart. If yeah. we would put that aside and work together for His glory, do y'all imagine the things that and we can do? Amen. 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 I told we, me and Randy were sitting right there talking today. Sometimes, you know, the fact is... Uh, we go through these things and we see God doing His thing, what He's doing. The fact is, I told Him, I still haven't lost vision. I still see the Lord doing great and mighty things. Amen. And, you know, uh, but we are part of that. Every person that sits here in this place, you know, you, you have to be a part of that, you know. And you have to add, and you have to, add to that because God has gifted you some way to add to it. Amen. The thing is, we've got to stop taking away. That's what that's where it gets down to it because I want to tell you, even the best person that darkens the doors of this church, if we're not careful, careful we can be an instrument of Satan. I'm gonna tell you that. We've got to keep our minds. That mind is a battlefield. Keep your mind straight. Let your heart be filled with that spirit of God. Let God in and let him do his work. And then we'll see things happen. I wanna tell you, I really still believe it. We can still see things happen. Go ahead, Trey. I want to say two things. First of all, You know, everybody sit down just a minute. I won't say, I won't make this statement. And in this, I, I, I don't mean it to hurt anybody. Actually, it's gonna, I hope that it lifts us and we think about, you know, kind of think about, put things into proportion. Um, what I was going to say, after, uh, after uh, Steve passed away, the church had our mind focused on one thing. And that was worshiping God. 
you know, you think about tonight, we had our minds focused on helping each other and being there for one another and doing all these things. And you look back and think back, after that, we were growing. I mean, we got over 50 people. We were probably having close to 60 in a, in a service, you know, at that time. And we started to grow. Where did, we got to think back and say, where did we lose that? You know what I'm saying? Because and, and the devil's a crafty, he's a sneaky, lying, crafty person. But we've got to look back and we've got to think about where did we lose that mentality because we ought to be there. You know, I thank God for the men that he's placed in my life. I mean, I'm thinking about tonight, you know, ever, all you men, you know, from, from everywhere back, I think about, you know, all the keys that were Michael and Randy and Johnny and all those, you know. Think about that. You know, I can tell you that I can't do it by myself. I can tell you that. But he placed us all here for a purpose. To fulfill that purpose. And we've got to get our mind set back to that purpose. We've got to forget, you know, all this stuff that the devil tries to cause us to separate, you know, uh, in between us, you know, uh, you know, whether it be, whatever it be, you know, uh, we can't allow that separation to enter into the church. Think about it tonight. We're family. All of us ain't going to agree. Sometimes we're going to disagree. But we got to be there for one another, even if you disagree with that brother or sister. That you got. Say, Lord knows everything's going to happen. We even don't know everything that's happened with Eric and all. Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent us to this church because He knew that was going to happen, and He knew that I would not be able to stand alone. Amen. So He sent me a family Amen. that I could go through it with and hold me up. Amen. I love y'all so much. Thank you. We love you too. We love you too. Yeah, Doug. Yeah. Sorry, Doug. No, I Doug's like, I, I never, they I never remember me. Like, I didn't feel like you intentionally forgot, but for some reason, I, I, just, it was just, I wanted to, I wanted to speak yeah. it. Because but it's true, Doug. Sometimes, friend. sometimes some of our friends feel like that we're not. You know, the thing about it is, the devil, we all get, you know, there are times, I think sometimes if we could all remain in the same room, <laughs> first of all, that wouldn't be great either, but, but, my point being is that there are times when the devil gets every single one of us alone. Yeah. Every single one of us alone. And when we're alone, he can really make us feel alone. Messes with that right there. He can really tear down with crap. Yeah. Meaning that he can tear down with... He doesn't, it doesn't need any truth to tear down. You're right. Uh, he doesn't need facts. He doesn't need anything real. Because our heart is way too ready. And we're already too insecure. Mm -hmm. we're, we're right to listen to lies. You know, um, when I run, and I have, I've been, I'm off, been off two weeks, but when I do run, there's a trick that I have sometimes when I'm really having a hard time. And that's that I almost completely shut my eyes. And I almost completely shut my eyes so that I can't see just how far ahead that road goes. Rather, I just put one foot in front of the other. And I think to a certain degree, sometimes how we get into trouble is we try to look too far down the road. We try to see too far out there. And I don't know if it, and especially in the, in the in this this spiritual landscape that we found ourselves in, in stormy weather, it's really hard to see very far. Yeah. All you see is nothing, and it's really disheartening at times. Yeah. So sometimes I think we just need to just close our eyes and know that God and, and, and know that God has got us. Yes, amen. Because every single time I open my eyes, I can find something wrong. Amen. And amen. I mean in the mirror, don't think I'm talking about anybody. But any time I open my eyes, amen. I can find something to be unhappy about. You're right, man. I can find some, something to be worried about. Listen. And to be, to be scared of. To lose hope over. Bless him. Yeah. But I serve a mighty God. That's right. Amen. 
who has me in the palm of his hands. Amen. So much so that I don't have to look around. I don't have to know what's every little thing that's going on. Amen. I can let go and let him let him be God. And I think to a certain degree, sometimes, because we're such family, sometimes we look to each other too much for the answers yeah. and not to God. We gotta look to him. Amen. We all want to be instruments of his hands. And so sometimes I think we rush God's hands. Because we want to be the answer. We want to be used. But sometimes, sometimes we're not the answer. That's right. All I want to say in finishing all that is that there's no one in here that isn't the answer to something. Else. That's right. There's no one here that this place would be better off without. We're better off with you here. And there's no, and there's so, so many people that are not here that I literally, I cry. Yes. Because I want them here. Yeah. I'm glad some of them are working in other churches. Bless God. But I'm selfish. I want them here. <laughs> Amen. I want my kids here. Yeah. Amen, brother. Love you. Amen. We love you too. Go ahead, Marla. I think we ought to start by trying to get Bobby back. Yeah. Amen. Now he, he was a big part of this church. He did a lot with this church. Amen. I think we ought to try to get Bobby back. Amen. And I, and Tappy knows I've asked him and I want him to come back. So, you know, uh, just pray for Bobby on that note. I mean, you know, he's texted me this week and I'm texting him back and both him and I text her with nothing but love. So, um, it's my prayer that he'll make that decision. You know, in the end, it's all of us. All of us have a choice. Amen. You know, in that, we have a choice. We have a decision to make. I think we need Pray to the Lord to help. Amen. 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 Come to me. Uh -huh. Yeah. Getting in a little group talking about it. Talking about it. Talk about it. Get the bus to get with it. From now on. You're right, Keith. From now on, it ain't going to play out here, out to the side. Mm -hmm. We're going to come in here. That's right. And we're going to talk about it. That's what we need to do. If we have more churches to do that, I mean, I believe we're a true church. We're going to press in the path that we are. But we need to come together and talk about these things, you know. I mean, we need to work them out in the midst. So, because as long as you don't, communication is the key. He said today, if we break down anywhere, it's in communication. Amen. We need to be able to talk to one another about how we're feeling. About that. How to not let Satan offend you. Yeah. Amen. And the church itself. Do not let your brothers and sisters in your church offend you. Don't keep your effects. That's how you tear down your church. That's how you tear it down. And just, and I'll admonish everyone after that on the receiving end, for those you come to, we need to work, uh, nobody need to, it, we, in other words, this is one time when things are better by committee. Amen. Because the thing about it is, is if you come to me about an issue, or I go to Keith about, uh, if you come to Keith about an issue, even if it's the same issue, because Keith and I have different tools. We're going to handle it differently. And it doesn't mean that Keith's wrong or that I'm wrong. Yeah. That's why we get together. That's why we need to talk. Because, too, it's come to the place where it seems like I'm, you know, and I'm not lifting myself up in this. What I'm saying is I don't want to be Moses judging all the people. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to judge. Don't let me be what's right and wrong. You know, let's let this right here. That's Amen. Right. Let that tell you what's right and wrong. Because I'll, I'll fail you. I'll mess it up. I'll, you know, just... I can tell you I already have in a lot of areas. I can just admit that. But uh, that won't never lead you 
That's true. Right there. He'll always tell you what's right and what's wrong. That is the standard. Amen. Right here it is. Now, if it's wrong by this standard, you know, there's got to be love and compassion even beyond that. That's right. Because he said, even if Paul said it in uh, Corinthians, even if we know all the scriptures, we exercise all the gifts, we do all this things, we do it without love and compassion, we're sounding brass and tingling soon. That's right. So there's got to be love and compassion because Christ showed it to us. But Amen. that is the standard of what's right and what's wrong. And you know, we gotta trust we gotta trust that. This is your pastor saying, trust the word. Amen. You know. Don't believe me, believe it. You know, you won't hear many say it really, because they want <coughs> control of the situation, but man, I know I can't control it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's that. This is it. This is what God has given us. Let's let's put our faith and trust in it. Amen. And uh believe it. Let's all come together. I want, Amen. I want to go back one more time. See me after. Yeah. Sure. If you're one of the two. Yeah, if you're one of the two, if you're lost, you don't know Christ, let's get together on that and make sure that you get out where you need to be before you leave. I just wanted to prove that's what I had. 